Good afternoon. Hello. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we are. My name is Bradley Charbonneau. I'm the president of Utet Toastmasters. Very happy to be here today, and I am going to. People are coming in and out of this room. <laughs> Sorry about them. And I am going to go a little, probably, off color. I'm going to bend the rules a little bit here and challenge us and challenge you to think slightly differently. And my goal for this afternoon, I know at the end of the day, it's already getting a little dark. I can barely see your faces anymore. I know the, the beer crown over there is calling us. But I have one last request of the day. I would like to offer you one characteristic of a leader that you're a little bit scared or hesitant to accept or to embrace in yourself. So I want to scare you a little. I want to go beyond the boundaries a little bit. And then at the end of the day, you think, oh yeah, that one thing, I'm going to work on that. That's something I would like to do. I would like to get better in. So that's my goal for the day. We have about half an hour. At the end of the day, I want to keep you awake. This is going to be interactive and needs your feedback. So here we go. With that thought of one thing for you, one characteristic, and you might hear it at different times during our presentation, but you hear that one word and you know, ah, that's for me. Okay? So I'm going to tell you a little story, and then we're going to do some, some homework here. So for a few years, many years ago, I worked for what is called a naming agency. So there's advertising, and there's branding, then there's naming. And so we specifically worked, we created names for companies and products. And I'll never forget how I got this job. I was in Vietnam on a big world trip, and I'm reading a Business Week magazine. And it said, we are looking for this person who is very difficult to find. It's a linguist with an MBA. People, somebody who can speak multiple language, languages but has a business background. Because that ideally can bring this sort of language and softer sciences in with the harder sciences of business. Bring that together. That's the person we're looking for. I raised my hand in a little cafe, nobody's looking at me, and I said, that's me, that's me, they're describing me. I tore this article out of this magazine, and I went to where companies happened to be in the San Francisco Bay Area, where we were planning on moving to, I had been living in the Netherlands. We moved to San Francisco, I go to the company, I say, here, you're looking for me. Long story short, hired me on the spot. So I worked for a naming agency because I was a linguist with an MBA. I know my languages, I know my business. I know my soft side, I know my hard side. The, the language sciences, the hard sciences. It was a good balance. So one of our first projects, this is around 1999-2000. One of our first projects, so I'm in San Francisco, and then down about an hour south of Silicon Valley the heart of the technological world. And what was happening at the time was that they would get money invested in them, millions of dollars, overnight. And we would get phone calls the next day. We got one, they would say, we just got $14 million yesterday. We kind of have a company, but we don't have a name. Can you come <laughs> later? We will pay you whatever you want. <laughs> and we would go down there, of course. And for one name, we charged $60,000 wow. <laughs> to create a name for a company. So here's an example of a name we did back then. It was a financial startup company, and this was the beginning of trend, easier transactions. How can I pay you? How can I give you money quickly and easily? Not cash, but sort of digitally. And remember, this is 2000, a long time ago in the digital world. And they wanted something sort of about finance, but also sort of friendly, about payments and friend, pay friend, pay, uh, pay, pay pal. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. That's what the company took. 
that became PayPal of today. So that's a very easy one. Why? Because the logic behind this thinking was objective, payments friendly, pay how. It was easy for us as a naming agency to convince the company this is a good name for you because it qualifies the objectives you're looking for. They say, great, thanks. And we say, could we be paid in stocks, please? <laughs> <laughs> they said what we learned from Abraham earlier, no. <laughs> Another company we worked for, they had us into the meeting, and what we would do, we would come up with hundreds of names in our agency. We just crank them out, and it's not what you think. It's not sitting around the table brainstorming. It's very solitary work with a thesaurus and a Greek and Latin dictionaries, and we're piecing together made up names, and, but we're still, we need to remember, we have to have the objective Sale, sales pitch, so to speak, to be able to sell the name to the company so they could sell the name to their employees and then the company could sell the product to the individuals, to the clients. So we had a client and we come up with all the names and then in the presentation we show them about 40 or 50, but then we have more 10 or 12 that we think these are the best names for your company today. Here's our presentation, and here's the reason why these 12 are good names, okay? Then, ideally, at the end, if we've done a good job, we would like you to, on the spot, think of three or four names that, your three, four, five, that are your best names that you need to take to the next step, which is to your trademark attorney to make sure this name, you know, PayPal, for example, doesn't exist already or is a shoe store in New York, okay? So this company, they're all excited. Thank you so much. We have our three or four. Here's what they are. Great, great presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, our next steps, what we're planning on doing is we're gonna go to the 300 employees of the company and we're gonna present all of the 12 names and we are gonna decide by vote in a very democratic process about what the best names should be. So, if I'm, if I'm going to take from Abraham, I'll just cut the story short. No, you should not do that. We are experienced in this. We know what we're doing. We do not advise you. In fact, we wholeheartedly discourage you from taking that democratic process in this particular case. Because you're going to open it up. You're going to have your opinion, your opinion, your opinion. You're going to have 300 different opinions. They're going to feel, feel very involved in the process. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to get LCD, lowest common denominator. So because everybody has their opinions, here's the, here's the best name up here. Oh, but that doesn't work. Oh, well, because this group doesn't like it. And then over here, we have that one. That's, it's really, but, but that doesn't work. So let's talk about this a little more. Let's spend a few more days. How about some weeks? This one, it doesn't work anymore. This one, I don't have to. Can you see where this is going? It's going nowhere, and it's going nowhere fast. This is where I come from a, well, used to be democratic country. <laughs> uh, and I, do, I don't know so much about dictatorships, but this became, we were promoting dictatorships in decision making. We said no. Dear Silicon Valley company, this is what you need to do. You need to go into your board, to your 300 people, and you're going to make an announcement. And not three or four, it's the one name. This is the one name. Dear employees, after a huge amount of work and discussion and labor and cost and work, this is the name we have. Isn't it fantastic? Let us celebrate. Open the champagne. We have succeeded. We have done it. Welcome to PayPal, whatever the name was. So from a dictator perspective, they are not making a democracy, but they are cho choosing the strong role of making the big, difficult decision that they are going to then stand behind because they made it. And if it fails, it was our choice. 
It's okay. We, we will deal with it. Okay? So, there's my story of the naming industry. And this was my first look at a, the only positive aspect that I've ever seen of a, what I'm here calling a dictatorship. Now, what I would like to do is connect some characteristics of a dictatorship. And I know, <laughs> I choose this on purpose because I know it's hard to think what positive things can I think of, like Kim Jong-un or Putin? <laughs> what does the guy do? What is good there? But let's try. Pretend we are the biggest fan of this di terrible dictator, and we are brainwashed, and we think just like they do, and we're their big fans. So I just would like a few characteristics of this dictator that we can come up with right now, maybe five. Anything come to mind? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Focus. Focus. Self-confidence. Self-confidence. Quick. Quick decisions. Quick. Quick decisions. I'm actually going to put that in there. That together is fantastic, but even separately they're also great. Quick, I don't need to ask all the people. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Anymore. It's easy, you don't have to think. Easy. Oh, easy. Vision. Vision. God, I'm running out of room because we have to need some room for the bad stuff. Vision. Mission. <coughs> mission. Okay. Personal mission. Personal mission, yeah. One back there. Uh, okay, I'm not sure, but if uh, the dictator leader is professional, when it's professionality, but only if it's pro uh, only he or she is professional. Professional. Because, yes. Okay. Only if. Because <laughs> I'm gonna say pro. Bro. Because this is a problem. You know, to to <laughs> smart. smart. Okay. Smart. Now we're getting controversial. Smart. <laughs> 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 we have too many, but that last two. I think this also applies to democracy in some ways, but a dictator, if they're the one making decisions, it's their fault as well. As in, Certain the blame. dictators actually yeah. take uh, responsibility for Respons their actions. Well, I mean, if there's accountability, then it's very clearly their decision and their responsibility. A bit like what you were saying with okay, PayPal. Okay. Yeah. Accountability. I mean, despite democracy being that too. Yeah. I think, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a word. I'm gonna say fear, because they love fear. I fear that you're all scared. You're all, I'm just pushing you down. <laughs> I have even more power now because you're scared to even do anything because I'm the big bad dictator. Fear. So, okay, we have way that was way too easy. This is problematic. Aha, admiration. Yes, because we're thinking, if we're trying to think of these fans of this dictator, they probably you know, admire this, this great, oh, great leader. Oh, great leader. <laughs> okay. Now, think, let's think back to, so we were a democracy in the naming agency in that we work together, we bounce the ideas off each other, and then let's just say, for example's sake, that we, to this company, we said, you know what, you guys go discuss it. Now, or if we think of, I mean, for me, the Dutch government is a perfect example of a democracy with its good sides and bad sides. There's so many parties, they often have to uh, balance, they have to compromise. In fact, I'm gonna do that in a second, that one. It's a big compromise. So let's do a couple a couple of the benefits of a democracy. Benefits here. <coughs> Did you notice there are fewer hands? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting here in the, the Netherlands <laughs> for the news program recording. Yes. Uh, brainstorm and discussion. Oh, brainstorm and discussion. Sounds very good, doesn't it? Brainstorming. I'm just gonna put that one because discussion is involved in brainstorming. Inclusivity. Inclusivity. Oh, so friendly. Inclusivity. <laughs> <laughs> Control slash accountability, but in a different way to the other one. 
Control accountability. As, yeah. in, as if maybe as a body, right? Well, as in you, you know, you can yeah, you have control over the decisions. If if you, if, the, if there's a bad dictator, it doesn't make too much of a difference because it's a democracy anyway. Okay. So people okay. decide. I'm gonna put it in. Influence. It in, influence. By vote. By vote. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say vote. Okay. Mm. Really mm. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel both co-creation. 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 Isn't this side more fun? No, co-creation. That doesn't make fun. Feelings. 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 How do you feel about this? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, checks and balances. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> we just got no more fun. Checks, checks and balances. And balances. Uh, <laughs> two, two more. Two more. Checks and progress and change. Progress and change. <laughs> we didn't hear that over here, did we? <laughs> progress and change. Starting to write messier. Time for a beer. Creative. Oh, creative. Okay. That's enough unless it is like a burning one. Like, Boss them up. Okay. Wow. One more quick exercise. It's similar, but in a parallel universe. Okay? <laughs> so just because sometimes our minds, you know, we're, we're here, we're good. We have so many here. I'm very impressed. But over here, this is a original artist and a cover band. Okay. So a cover band is a band that they play other people's music. Okay? That's all they do. It's very recognizable, it's well known. They don't have to learn any new music. All they do is play what that other band did. And it's usually quite good, and it's recognizable, and it's easy, right? So again, this is a quick list of the positive aspects of being, oh, and this is the original artist. I write my own songs. I sing my own stuff. I'm my own original uh, artist that is creative and does its own thing. So what about over here? Original artists. What are some of the characteristics of the original artist? Creative. Yeah. Creative. Innovative. Oh, innovative. Creative. Innovative. 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 Yeah, I would say so. Because if you're an original artist, you can do you know, 
Commercial. Commercial. Oh, pragmatic. <laughs> I have one slight alteration here, but it's funny because I don't need it. If I didn't have enough, I would go to this to get more, but <laughs> you guys, it's, it's, it's almost disturbing how well we did Dangerous on the of the positive <laughs> characteristics for the dictator. But Another one, another word you could use here which helps with our thinking of leadership is something like genius. Like in my world, I think of Steve Jobs. He was a jerk, he was not easy to work, he was not easy to work with, he was in no way a democracy. It's this was the way we're gonna do it, and that's the way it is. If you don't like it, you're fired. You know, very much like a dictator. But look at the success he had. And can we look back and say, well, was it success? You know, was it really from Steve Jobs? And you could say, yes, it was. <laughs> well, <laughs> Stalin was also a success. Stalin. Of Pol Pot or Mao. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. In fact, that's clearly over here in the dictatorship column. Success. Let's start a war. Let's murder millions of people. Because it's their idea, and they're going to be bold and do it. So. So they are choosing the fast and easy solutions. Oh, oh, oh. They're choosing the fast and easy solutions. So I mean, they are I mean is this fast? Is there fast and easy anywhere <laughs> in the democracy? No, but it's no. true. It's what? There are real solutions. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh, 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 okay, well, see, now we're getting controversial. <laughs> we had fast and easy a minute ago. Yes, yes, sign me up for the fast and easy group, please. <laughs> or then, who would like it to be in the real group with time consuming and slow and feelings? Mm. Yeah. Depends. <laughs> so, depends on who is within this group. Yes, it depends on who is saying it. Yes. It depends on who is saying it. So here we are today. We are the leaders of our Toastmasters. We are here as an officer's training. We're not here at the regular Toastmaster member training. We are here at the officer's training. I found there was a the old paper version of the uh, Pathways World it was called the Competent Community. Mm. I always thought that was a little funny because I thought, I hope I'm competent, but it's not really my big like aspirational goal to be, I oh, yes, I am the competent communicator. I can like do this stuff. That's it. I thought I want to be the confident dictator. Or in Steve Jobs language, I want to be the genius. I want to be the expert. I it's okay if I'm a little spoken out. In fact, today, I consciously do this because I'm going to annoy a few of you. I'm going to go a little bit beyond. And here we are making a list of positive aspects of dictators. I mean, these people are also murderers. They, they caused wars. They probably killed millions of people. And here I am with a positive list of them. So I'm in a Facebook group with 36,000 authors. It's, it's nuts. And one of their <laughs> The rules, they have these very simple rules at the top. And one, they actually just changed it, but it was, uh, English, don't be a dick. <laughs> and they said, tell me what they're talking about. Don't be a dick. Okay? But in Toastmasters, and I'm speaking to a very niche audience here. We are leaders in our own communities. We are leaders in our Toastmasters. We wouldn't be here today if we didn't want to improve, ex excel, elevate our game. So I'm not here to talk about how you can become the average communicator. I'm not here today to talk about how you can become the competent communicator. Clearly, you're competent enough or you wouldn't be here today. I'm here to go a little bit beyond what you're comfortable with, a little bit higher than what you're used to, and look at the confident communicator or the genius communicator. And I'm not going to say that anymore because that does have such a negative connotation. I only use it to pull these words out in us so that we can strive towards that level.
So what we have done today is we have created a matrix here, a grid that we can pull from because of all these different, of all these different groups here. We're really talking about you. So because we're here, because we see these four different areas, and two are parallel and two are parallel, yeah. But what do we see as our characteristics as what we want to strive to? And we know, I'm joking, of, oh, I'm not joking about the murders and killings, but I'm joking about it in this particular room to get us to get to these higher levels of aspiration. So what might be a little bit uncomfortable as a characteristic for you to get to that expert a little bit taller, a little bit bigger of a leader, a communicating leader in your function, in your role, in your Toastmasters, and think about it, in your family, in your job. Think of Steve Jobs walks on the stage. He's an idol, he's an icon. I mean, he's just a dictator too. But that's partly with fear and negative crap. We want to be up there, we want to be respected, we want to be heard. Our true voice, another one over here I like is, is creative, is voice. We have our own message. We're not here a cover band. I don't just want to do whatever the neighboring Toastmasters group does. I want to be in a democratic process in that we're here today and we are working together. What we're doing right now is a democratic process. Yet what I want to do to finish off today is a bit of dictatorship. I want us to choose a bit of a scary characteristic for us that we don't have. And I'm going to write some down on the board, but what I would like you to do is look at these lists if you can read my writing and think of something that applies to you, that scares you, that, that elevates your game a little bit here on a Saturday afternoon in Apollo. And I'd like us to look back and think about that crazy guy who was talking about dictators and how that applied to us improving as leaders in our role in Toastmasters. So let's get a list here. We can choose from any of the four. Which one, which one jumps out at you that you think, ooh, I'd like that one? Anyone? Quick decisions. The mission. 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 So sort of your, your purpose, your meaning, your this is my path, this is what I'm going to do. Exploration. Exploration. Creative. Creative? Yep. And So I really, the inspiration, this is what we can take home today. That we as the officers, as the board, as the elite of our Toastmasters group, how can we inspire our members? How can we inspire our clubs to rise up? And it's through leadership. And sometimes it's going to be through the sort of harder stuff. I mean, the, the, the bad stuff that really works for these dictators. And like somebody said, successful dictators. It's kind of funny, right? I mean, it's terrible. I mean, they're murdering half the, half the country. But a successful dictator, and what characteristics do they have? What can we then apply to our own world, not murdering people, and improve our own leadership? What else comes to mind? Innovation. What? Innovation. Innovation. then I believe we can get to innovation through democracy. Here, here's sort of, for me, the, the crux of the message this afternoon. We have our democracy. Of course we have democratic processes, who we are as people. And we are going to discuss, just like we're doing this afternoon, and you're going to have your board meeting, and you're going to talk, and you're going to brainstorm, and you're going to compromise, and you're going to include and be inclusive, all of that. But at the end of the day, the leader is going to dare to decide. That's the hard part. The leader is going to say, 
I have all my information. This is the name we choose for the company. I have all everything I've, I've done with the democratic process. I believe we should do this. And that's the difference between the democratic and the leader. That's the not the follower and the leader. Uh, one, one thing that's not unnoticed at all, I think uh, a good leader would, should be empathetic. empathetic. Okay, and now. a servant. Empathetic. And a servant. Okay, I'm not putting that in the dictator column. <laughs> no, I said it's in no column, but I think okay. uh, there, there are no of those columns, but I think they are very, good, very important for a real good leader. Yes, I agree completely. Empathetic. Thank you. I was just thinking, yeah. even if you do become more decisive, you know, take on the characteristics of the dictator, it still in many ways stays a democracy, whatever happens, because you need your members and otherwise, you know, you want them to join. So sure. that's the thing. Yeah. Yes, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is adding Use in. this for everything it's exactly. worth. Exactly. Yeah. My, my hope for this afternoon is that we take one element yeah. over here mm. to just that one little level higher. Mm. So this is it's a balance between you. <laughs> see, <laughs> well, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. But see, balance is not controversial enough. If I were going to come over here and mm. say, let's do this normal balance, everything's fine, it's all good, you're enough of this and enough of that. But see, this is the dare that I am making this afternoon. I dare to bring out dictators and be a hmm. positive column. Yeah, but of course, it's in fact, but in fact yeah. I'm going to put that up here because this, I think, is could be sort of the summary of all of this. Find your balance. Being convincing. 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 Yeah, persuasive. That's what I was talking about. Okay, okay. Yeah. And we can be persuasive. Also because we have all of the knowledge that we have worked on together. Mm. And now I can be persuasive by saying, well, as a Demo in the democratic process, we went through steps one, two, three, four, five, and now I know that step three is the one we should do. Mm. I said mission slash focus then. Not mission, but then focus. Okay. Yeah, I mean, also in the middle. Oh, okay, okay. Focus. Focus. Mission slash focus. Ah, is objective mission. mission. It's a combined. <laughs> this is what I think is hard here in the democratic process with the focus. And that's why I see us as leaders to take that role, stand up, and then you align also, the focus. You also can put together exploration and decision. Exploration and decision? Just like mission and focus. A leader who is always uh, exploration is not, <coughs> is not yeah. helpful for a, a team. So, so exploration. You, have, you have to explore and then decide and say, okay, that's what we are doing. <coughs> yes, because of course the democratic process is known for exploration. <coughs> let's explore, let's, let's do a research study <laughs> for a few years first <laughs> before we have to do this. Yeah. This is the hard part. This is the easy part. This is what I want to think about today. This is really fun. You're a little side personal note. So I really have written 18 books. And I, the, the, I have an 11 book series. And each book in the series is a one letter, one letter, one word verb. And we have come across a few of them today, for example, this one. Because I think each of these verbs has its own pillar of importance as it holds up the bigger structure. I won't share my slides online because that would be a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you make your picture. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Have a wonderful Saturday evening.